Hi, I'm going to now go through some different actions a organization should follow having suffered a cyber attack. So this will be packaged likely in a policy, potentially a standalone policy just focused on actions following a cyber attack. It might be somehow integrated with a disaster recovery policy. But if you can see, we've got this purple stage called recover, which is where that policy would normally fit in. And the names here, investigate, respond, manage, recover, analyze, will all vary depending on the policy author. But here are just some names I've taken which fit with the actions involved. It's really key to have a clear plan for a cyber attack. Even if you are confident in your security, you have to imagine that you could get breached, there could be an issue, and so you should respond in a, in a very clearly defined way. If you have an attack, it'll be very stressful and crazy and manic. You don't wanna to have to improvise at this stage. If you've got a clear plan and a clear policy you can just follow it and it'll ensure you won't miss off an action or miss off a stage. If you get some of these actions out of order, it can mean you might get fined more, it can mean your customers get affected more, it might mean you take a longer time to recover overall. So these actions are important. So at the top, the first thing we should be doing is investigating an attack. So really this is us knowing we've been attacked and trying to find out more about it. So figuring out how severe is it, is it going to affect us Quite a, in a quite a big way, is it quite limited, what is going on, and also how is it happening? Are we able to find out how the attack is working? Is it a DDoS? Is it a virus? What is going on? And perhaps where is it coming from? Now once you know that last point, and also you know what is being affected, you can start to update any stakeholders. A stakeholder is anyone really who has an interest in what's going on. So maybe some data is being leaked, and you need to find out who owns that data and inform them straight away. Maybe you've got some shareholders who need to know this because it might affect their share price. Maybe you've got some staff who are affected and it, likewise they need to know about it. And separately, you must also inform authorities. So you might want to inform the police, either your local police or the national wide national crime agency. These police officers work across the whole country and often are involved in quite serious cyber attacks. And in the UK, you might also need to inform the Information Commissioner's Office, the ICO. They manage fines and make sure companies are looking after data securely so if any data has been leaked which could affect individuals so maybe bank account details their address things like this really personal data you must inform the ico within 72 hours if you are delaying more than a few days you could get an even bigger fine and it become even worse so you must inform the ico the police you should inform in most cases but the ico needs to be informed by most companies. Now his first two steps are just really the attack's happening and you need to let people know ASAP. Now manage is where we start to actually, um, I guess, try and limit the attack's effect. So you try and contain it. By contain, I mean you try and stop it getting worse. So you're trying to make it not spread anymore. You might try and disconnect some systems. You might try and take the network down, things like this to stop it getting worse. And also, depending on what the attack is, you're going to follow more specific policies and use various technologies to try and stop it. So a DDoS will get stopped in a different way to a worm, for example, right? So there are certain specific things you should do to stop a specific attack. And after you've sort of managed to contain the attack to a certain extent, you can start to recover from it. So you're gonna follow what we've talked about so far, the disaster recovery policy and the steps involved, and finally apply any remedial action. By remedial action, I mean any issues should get fixed so maybe you found there was a, le a bug in some of your code. Maybe you found there was a server which was not encrypted. You might try and fix this at this stage. And finally, once things are back to normal or almost back to normal, you can start to analyze and really try and learn from the attack. You want to always get better and become more secure. You don't want it to happen again. And so you try and update any policies and procedures to try and stop the same attack happening again and trying to learn from it.